Hey guys, let's talk about the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Late, I know. But we're here. Hey guys, I am back at the desk once again. I know it's a... That's what I have to deal with when I'm making videos. When I'm making skits down here and reviews and whatnot, ever else, that's what I got behind me, outside. Oh well, you guys are just gonna have to deal with it. If it's in the video, it's in the video. Yeah, uh, I'm back at the desk doing another review. It's been an interesting beginning of the year. I, I know that uh, I've posted one video so far and it took a lot longer to make that video than I thought it would. We actually started filming that in March of last year, believe it or not. I've just been trying to find a date where I can get Pete and just film the rest of it with him, that that guru scene. But anyways, I'm I'm back here again. I don't know how often I'm gonna be doing these. So don't uh, don't expect a whole lot of consistency, but I will try to be consistent with making videos, making skits, but just it de it depends on you know my my schedule and what else is going on because there's just so much I'm trying to do by myself and it, it just gets very stressful. So yeah, it's just been an interesting beginning of the year. Just other things besides you know career career stuff, work stuff, video stuff. But yeah, uh, let's jump into this. Enough about me. <laughs> So, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, before we uh, went and watched this movie back in November when it came out, I actually did um, read the book for it, and let me tell you, I was very surprised to see how book accurate it was. I mean, there are subtle differences that obviously happen with book adaptations into movies. It's just something that happens, just, you know, time constraints and story-wise. There's just certain things they change to make the story flow well, and I can understand that. But man, <laughs> they did good at adapting this into a movie. So what this is, uh, is basically the, it's 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 a villain origin story, um, is a, a way to put it. It's about Coriolanus Snow and his rise to power in Penem, like, so... 64 years before Katniss was in the Hunger Game. Took me a moment. <laughs> Took me a minute there. So yeah, it starts out with uh, him, you know, uh, just living in a decrepit apartment with his uh, his grandmam and his cousin Tigress. Yes, Tigress from the last Hunger Games movie is actually his cousin for those of you who haven't read the book. And I'm sorry I spoiled it. I should have mentioned, there are spoilers up ahead. And what happens is uh, he he's in the academy um, at the... Uh, the ripe age of 18 right now and uh, he and other students at the academy are going to be selected as mentors for the tributes in that year's Hunger Games and back in this time the Hunger Games were run a whole lot different than they were in uh, the Hunger Games we saw 10 years ago and in the original book trilogy so what happens is the mentors are not pooled from the districts they're pooled from uh, the the, the the academy the 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 students at the academy and Coriolanus Snow ends up with Lucy Graybeard from District 12 lucky number and what he does is uh, he uh, basically looks out for her and tries to get her to survive in the Hunger Games and tries to make a name for himself by doing so and along the way he ends up falling in love with this girl and near the end he ends up looking out for himself and you know betraying his friends and looking out for his future over like falling in love with this girl and running off with her it, it's a very tragic love story but it's so good how they did it i mean i for a while it's like you're rooting for coriolanus like you believe that he has good in him and that he can make the right choice and do the right thing but then it reaches a certain point where you just stop rooting for him because of one choice he makes and it's so sad it, it's so sad it makes you like him for most of the movie most of the book and then just that one moment kills it uh, i i like the movie i i really like the movie what i like most um i have to think about this for a minute wow I guess I just love the 
you know the aesthetic of it i i i love the the art and production design that went into it the production quality that went into it i think it's really cool how they gave it that old vintage vibe even though we know this is like a time that's like say maybe a hundred years after our time which is really cool it's a really cool aesthetic they they put into this what i hated most about the movie just certain things that they changed uh for the movie that weren't actually in the book or that were different in the book um I'll give one example. It's when uh, Coriolanus was in the hospital because of the bombing at the arena. And that is where he watched Lucy Gray uh, performing on stage. You know, like you, In the original Hunger Games, you saw um, Caesar Flickerman interviewing each of the tributes. Well, they had something like that with uh, Caesar's ancestor, Lucky Flickerman, interviewing everyone. What I didn't like is that they had Coriolanus in the hospital while... Um, she went up on stage, or Lucy Gray went up on stage to play her guitar. In the book, he was actually he actually went there with her, um, and I think it, it would have been better if they would have shown that, um, like they did in the book. Also, they they left out some characters, like when um, Grandmam and Tigress got uh, evicted from their apartment, they went to live with Pluribus, who was a friend of the Snows, and he owned a bar. And Pluribus actually is the one who got Lucy Gray her guitar for that interview um with lucky flickerman so yeah that's you know just minor things i didn't like about the movie um things they changed for the movie that were in the book and that actually happened um differently in the book but yeah all in all i really like the movie i i think it's a great um great villain backstory um and me i'm just someone who's passionate about the hunger games they've just been a great inspiration to me in my filmmaking career my writing career um i'm not um i don't advertise myself as a writer but i do write um you guys know i write i write skits <laughs> but I, I am writing feature films and i have been writing feature films for a while now and you know hunger games is just one of those films that's been very inspirational to me um just the the action wise and the, the character wise the character development i love the character development in um hunger games lord of the rings is my favorite movie and i've, I've drawn a lot of inspiration from that but hunger games like just the dystopian um aesthetic of it and the character development i i, I love i just like the hunger games so yeah uh that's all i got for the movie i think i think the acting was very very good i don't know how many of you know my thoughts about this but i don't like rachel zegler personally um i think that she's got a very big leftist mouth and that sometimes she just needs to i think uh you know casting her snow white is a big mistake but i will admit she did do very good as lucy gray and she did stay true to lucy gray's character in the film and she is a great singer i don't deny any of that i just don't like her as a person i mean of course love her with the love of christ always but i mean it's just like I'll stop there. If they could have cast someone else for the role, I would have been happy with that, but she did good at it. Maybe they could have cast Brett Cooper as the role. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'll stop being controversial, and I think I'll just end this right there. I'll give it a 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Anyways, thanks for watching. God bless.